Our guest on the pod today is Tyler Cavanaugh. The GW alum's career began stateside in the NBA G League, but he's about to begin his fourth season overseas. His career internationally spans countries like Germany, Spain, and now with the team that is known as the Premier Lithuanian Squad and a member of the Euro League in Zalgiris. Uh, but before we get to the interview, just a reminder to help support the pod by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Those are some of the free, easy things to do to help us. Uh, you can also find us all our content on expathoops.com, as well as merchandise, so you can wear our logo with pride. And for our audio listeners, you can find exclusive extra content on YouTube. But now let's get into it with Tyler. Tyler, welcome to Expat Hoops. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. We're going to pick up from where you were at GW, the end of your college career. Uh, we were talking a little bit off the pod about how you destroyed Mason uh, a couple times <laughs> at least. Uh, and, you know, NIT success, um, super, you know, many accolades in college. Um, so you're certainly somebody that is performing at a high level. What were the opportunities like for you as you're winding down your college career? Yeah, I mean... Uh, going to GW was one of the best decisions I made. Um, had a lot of success there. And then coming out of school, I mean, you, I didn't really think I had an opportunity to get drafted. I, I got invited to Portsmouth, which is for all the seniors. And I was, a, I was on the team that won there and I played well. And then I got to play in the, the Reese's uh, all senior all-star game at the final four. And I was able to play well there. And then, I had a uh, I had 13 NBA workouts, so I thought I might had a might have a chance to sneak into the last five picks, ten picks if we were lucky. Um, but I I knew it probably wasn't a possibility. Um, so there was opportunities to go overseas, but I wanted to try summer league and I wanted to give the NBA a shot. Whether that in which was most likely going to training camp, getting cut, and then going to play for a team's G League affiliate. So that's one of the things that we might get into if an extra if we have enough time with it, but. Skipping over, uh, you know, you wind up signing a contract with Atlanta, um, go down to the G League after being waived, uh, and then quickly are pretty much thrown into it because of all the injuries and everything perform really well. Uh, you spent the next season, I think, with Utah, but at about the point in time that you're going to go overseas, you wind up joining Albert Berlin. What was your what were your opportunities like at that point, and what was your decision process? Were you just, did you feel like the opportunities with the NBA dried up at that point and that you try your hand at the overseas? What was it? Um, well, so after my year in Utah, my agent had a conversation with the Jazz and the only way I was going to play summer league was them with them was if they thought I had a, had a chance to make the roster. And they said that wasn't really, in a, they didn't, they didn't see me in that way. So then we went to play summer league with the Knicks and I had me and my agent had talked and I didn't want to sign another two way. Um, and I thought it was time for me to, if I didn't get a, a, a significant partial guarantee or had an opportunity to make a roster that it was time for me to go overseas and start my journey over there. And uh, then Alba Berlin called and uh, there was significant interest from them and they were moved. They were going to play in the Euro league. And I was like, wow, yeah, that's a wonderful opportunity and something I'd really want to do. Um, so once we saw that after summer league, the Knicks weren't, weren't going to offer me much more than a two way, um, we decided it was time to take the Elba Berlin deal and, uh, and start that next step of my career. Uh, now, one of the things that if I could back up a little bit is your dad has some experience, uh, playing overseas. And I know that that's probably a question I probably could ask you to, in terms of like finding your agent and how you kind of probably were some level or some degree aware of what going overseas would be like, would you say it was probably helpful having your father uh, be somebody that was a source of support uh, because he'd kind of gone through it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he only played one year overseas, but he kind of had a uh, some knowledge of the business and how it worked. And throughout my senior year with agents and everything contacting me and I was very blessed that I could just give them my dad's contact and I could just focus on playing um, so he went through that and met with agents and I decided to go with Keith Glass who's a small agent uh, has a small agency G3 out of New Jersey area and and I'm still with him today he's been nothing but great for me and a uh, very close relationship and I didn't want to be one of those guys who went to a big agency and just got lost in the shuffle 
um, I wanted to be, I wanted to have someone who I could develop a relationship with and kind of be part of my family too. So we talk very often and, and it's been great and he's helped guide me along this journey. And that's one thing that a, a lot of our regular listen, listeners will know is that it's not uncommon for people to change agents. And so uh, I know that there was, in some of the research for this, I was looking up uh, the fact that, you know, your dad had, you know, interviewed some of these agents and that this was pretty much the only one that you talked with, according to the to the articles anyway. And mm-hmm. So it's interesting to see that uh, that you're still with him, because when you look at the arc of your career, you know, you've you've been, you know, obviously there was the NBA G League um, aspect that probably affords you almost to kind of skip a few steps, whereas, you know, some of our other guests have, you know, pretty much started. I, I don't want to say at the bottom, but for lack of a better term, at the bottom and then they've worked their way up. Uh, and they might have some trials and tribulations along the way, but you know, your first stop overseas anyway is Alba Berlin, pretty big stop. So um, you've been pretty much in a good situation every single year, as far as I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I've been very blessed um, to have the opportunities that I had uh, early in my career with the Hawks and then the Jazz and then getting that opportunity to play for Berlin because a lot of guys don't get that chance their first year overseas and really have to start in second division somewhere or a low level first division team and put up absurd numbers and work their way up. And a lot of guys have made very successful careers doing that. Um, but I've been fortunate to have the opportunity to play for great clubs in Elba and Tenerife and now with Zogris. And uh, uh, I'm just, I'm just hoping I can continue to to improve and continue to play better and see where it'll take me. So, but let's go back a little bit to uh, your first year with Alba. Um, you know, it's your first stop overseas. Had you traveled overseas uh, prior to actually going to play overseas? Never. That was my first time in Europe. Culture shock, for sure. Uh, but we were fortunate enough to go to Berlin, which is a huge international city and had so many different food options. So many people spoke English. Uh, my wife and I, we were pretty much felt very comfortable which was key in our first year overseas and that also is a very interesting season uh the team did really well uh won the bbl uh won a cup as well so there there were two uh championship level uh, trophies that you guys took home but this is also a covid year um talk to us a little bit about what your experience uh not only being in your first season overseas adapting but uh what would wind up happening with COVID yeah it was a crazy year I mean uh, we had a really good team on the court it was tough for me it, the adjustment to European basketball I didn't believe in it and then I w- got to Europe and I had a lot of adjusting to do um, to get the coach to trust me and play me and and stuff and so it was a lot of up and downs that year it took me a while to figure out uh, Coach Aito's system, Aito Gar- Renesis Garcia is a legend in, uh, in European basketball, is Coach Barcelona and all these teams. And he was our coach at Berlin and it took me a while to understand his style and his system. And then I started to figure it out. And then I got hurt uh, in November and I was out for two months with an ankle. And by the time I came back and was getting back, getting my feet under me and getting back in the rotation and starting to get in a groove, COVID hit in March and that shut everything down. Um, and we, my wife and I went back to the States for, for like six or eight weeks. And then they called me back to go into a bubble in Munich to be able to finish our BBL season. And which was also difficult because in the German league, you can only have six foreigners play. You have to have six Germans. And I, I sat out a lot of games. I was as the seventh foreigner and in that BBL bubble tournament at the end of the year, there was, we want, we ended up winning it. Um, We played 10 games, but I only played in two. Um, So it was a, it was a really tough year for me. Um, But I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the game. um, And that really helped me, um, has helped me moving forward and especially helped me my next year in Tenerife. So thanks to SeatGeek for sponsoring Expat Hoops. We recently became a brand ambassador for them. SeatGeek is a ticket app that takes the confusion out of buying tickets. They offer a 0 to 10 score on each ticket to know if you're getting a good or a bad deal. Green means good, red means bad. You get the idea. It's a really easy way to get tickets to events. Plus, our viewers get $20 off their first ticket purchase with the expat hoops code. Click the link in the description to download the app. Remember the code, 
expat hoops e-x-p-a-t-h-o-o-p-s all one word to save yourself twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase with SeatGeek. In our house, when we use a VPN, we are sure to use NordVPN. NordVPN secures up to six devices and is compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, and even your Wi-Fi router. Plus, it's no risk to your wallet. Head over to their website for pricing or contact customer support 24-7. And remember, your purchase is always safe with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Click the link in the video description to use our code and make sure you're secure with Nord VPN. Let's go there, actually. Uh, so really good season in all the, you know, high level club. What was your decision process uh, and what were, I guess, your available options at that point in time? Because going from Alba Berlin, a great club in Germany and on the EuroLeague stage, uh, you know, next you're going to go to a Spanish team, which, I mean, living and playing in Spain is pretty much close to the tops. So what was it, what was the decision process like at that point to move from Alba to a Spanish club in the ACB? Yeah, I mean, my, fir my first year in Alba, we had a lot of team success, but individually, I didn't have a great year. Um, so my options were limited. I had to prove to everyone in Europe that I could play in Europe because it's a different game, as I'm sure all your uh, guests you have on tell you. It's two completely different games, and you have to – they don't care what you did in America. You have to come and show that you can play their game the way they want you to play it. Um, so we had some opportunities, uh, but it, no EuroLeague opportunities, so I knew I was going to have to take a step down in terms of – uh, international competition but when the opportunity to go to Tenerife and play in the ACB and also live on an island on a vacation destination came we jumped at it um, and it was one of the best decisions of my career so far because I went into a very good team a very good culture a group of great guys and and we had an unbelievable season and and I was able it took me a while to figure out my role and figure out how coach wanted me to play but once I did, he kind of let me go, and I was uh, a big part of our success there. Um, and we finished third in the ACB behind Real Madrid and Barcelona, and, and that was huge for that club. And we ended up making it to the semifinals, and we we pushed Barcelona to a game three. We beat them once, and and then they just overwhelmed us. But uh, it was a incredible season, um, and it was a huge year for me in that I – showed that I could play for a high level team in Europe. Yeah. And uh, I mean, when you're talking about going to step down, if anybody uh, is unfamiliar, it's basically going down to uh, a Euro cup from Euro league. So yeah, it's still a champions still, league. Champions oh, champ league. Was it champions? League? Sorry. Champions league. So yeah, no worries. it's, it's sort of one of those ones where it's, yeah, you had to go step down, but it's not too much of a step down, especially when you're talking about playing in the ACB. Um, and I can't, recall any instance of anybody ever telling us that they haven't enjoyed playing in Spain. So definitely a good choice at that point in time, uh, not only personally, but professionally, obviously, as well, which led you to your current spot where I believe you signed a two plus one contract, which that's also a little bit unusual as well. So if you could kind of take us through a little bit, not only of your thought process to get back, which is, again, top club in Lithuania, but also in EuroLeague, but also being able to have some sort of multi your commitment overseas is a little bit unusual too. Yeah, for sure. Um, when I was in Tenerife, uh, I knew I wanted to get back to the Euro League. That was my goal. I want to get back and play at the highest level in Europe. Um, and as you know, or your listeners know, if they've watched any Euro League basketball, in my opinion, it's some of the best basketball in the world with the way that the tactics are, the teams, the players, it's, very high level. Um, so that was a goal of mine. And the head coach of Zelgris at the time was Martin Schiller, who coached me in, uh, in the G League in Utah. Um, so we had had a previous connection. And uh, my year in Tenerife, I shot the ball very well uh, from three. Um, so they, when they came calling, and uh, I, right away, I was like, oh, of course, we got with my agent, we have to look at this. And this is an awesome opportunity. And I kind of with talking to my wife, we wanted to have a place where we could have some longer term stability for the first time in my career. So signing that contract um, was huge for us. And the fact of the opportunity to play Euroleague, but also to have like a two year commitment at least and to be able to 
kind of moved to a place and we've been in the same apartment now for this is a going on our second year and uh just to have comfort with the fans or the people the club the organization um it's been a, it's turned out to be a good decision and and obviously going to Zelgris uh is a huge opportunity for me as well so last season didn't necessarily get there was a little bit of upheaval there's several coaching changes um, now that you're headed into the second season there, uh, what are you looking forward to uh, as this season's about to get underway? Yeah, last year was a disaster in all forms of in all forms of it. three coaches, players in and out. Uh, we just never could get it to click. And once you get behind the eight ball in the Euro League, you're in you're in real trouble because uh, those teams are too good. And then. Uh, we weren't we weren't able we won the Lithuanian Cup, but we weren't able to win the Lithuanian League. Um, so it was a huge disappointment for for everyone involved, team, club, fans. Um, so there's a lot of motivation uh, to come back this season and uh, to compete and get back to where we know Zelgris uh, should should be. Uh, and I'm eager and excited to be a part of that. And I'm really. Uh, I don't know if you know, but in Lithuania, Lithuania is one of the only countries in Europe where basketball is number one and not soccer. Um, so the fans and the support here are unbelievable. We have a 14,000 seat arena. And, and I, so I just want to be here and be able to be a part of it when we're winning and, and having success and to be able to feel that excitement and to put, put that uh, product out on the floor for to excite the fans, you know, and so I'm hoping we can have a lot of success this year. We have a brand new team. We have a lot of new guys and we're putting the pieces together. And obviously it's, it's going to take a lot of hard work and effort on our parts, but, but I'm eager for the opportunity and the challenge. And now you haven't necessarily been there that long. And actually you're, we were talking a little bit off the pod that you're actually, uh, you know, not in country yet. And you guys are on an early swing. So what is that uh, early um, country swing been like, where are you right now? And uh, how long do you guys expect to be there? And uh, as far as like building camaraderie with the new team, have you found it to be successful so far? Yeah, yeah. So this preseason, I actually came late to preseason because I had the opportunity to play for the USA national team in the World Cup qualifying windows. And then I got here and they had already been training for two or three weeks and got to train with the team for four or five days. And then we're on a week long trip to uh, Malaga in Spain which is beautiful, right on the water, right on the beach. And we played three games. We played against Malia, which is a second division team here in Spain. And then we played in a tournament uh, against Unicaja Malaga and Real Madrid. And we beat Malaga and we lost to Madrid last night. And, uh, but, but it's, uh, these, these preseason trips are a good time for team bonding, as you said, and go out to dinner together and get to learn about each other and, get comfortable with one another because it really is important to do that off the floor. So on the court, we can be seamless and not really uh, have any, uh, we're not in function, you know? Yeah. So it's been, it's been a great trip. Um, we still have a lot to learn and a lot to work on, but uh, I think we're taking steps in the right direction. So actually you alluded to it just a second ago. The reason why you were late uh, to joining your professional team is you just had a stint with USA basketball. Uh Take us through how that opportunity arose and uh, take us through what your experience with that was like. Cause that's, it's not very common that we have somebody on the pod that has that level of experience. We have so, had some people that have played for other countries, uh, whether it's Romania, I think uh, somebody that's also in there now on the Croatian team. So we do get that, but I don't think that we've ever had anybody that's actually played for the U S team. So what was that experience like? It was incredible. I mean, I was sitting on the couch one day and, at my condo in July and my agent called and asked me if I would have interest in playing for the U S national team. And I said, is that even a question? Like, of course, I mean, coming and playing in Europe, all these guys talk about how they play for their national teams. And for us as Americans, it's just a dream, you know, I mean, like there's so many good players and, but now the way they've set up these FIBA qualifying windows, it allows for uh, the teams to be filled with, G League guys or European guys or just fringe NBA guys and not always with the with the NBA All-Stars so when that opportunity arose I jumped at it and it was a great time I mean to get to meet a lot of new people uh 
meet a lot of some new coaches, Coach Boylan, and met a lot of players. And I already knew some guys, John Jenkins and um, and other guys. But a uh, really cool experience. We got to play two games. We got to travel to Columbia. I'd never been. I'd never been there, and the U.S. hasn't played a game there in 30 years. So it was a packed house. It was an unbelievable environment, and for anyone who plays basketball in the U.S. to be able to put on that USA jersey was was very special, and it was an emotional moment, and I'm grateful for the opportunity, and it's something I'll always remember. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us today on the regular pod. Uh, we will do a few expat extras, but again, uh, Tyler Cavanaugh, he's going to be going into his third Euro League season this year with uh, Lithuanian and powerhouse Salgiris. Uh, thank you again so much for joining us on Expat Hoops. No problem. Thanks for having me. Hello, and thanks for watching. Be sure to give the video a like, and you can watch more videos over here. Uh, you can also click subscribe over here so you're notified when we have new content here on Expat Hoops.